Hello everyone, my name is Chrisom, and I'd like to have a conversation with you about your Kundalini Awakening experiences. Today, I would like to talk with you about, um, about what it is to be hurt. These days, as in most days, uh, there's a lot of hurt going back and forth on this world. Um, specifically right now I'm looking at the hurt that is given from within the genders. Men beating women, uh, women beating children, uh, and you know how that difficulty is passed. You know some people say that uh, that the shit rolls downhill, and it does, but it doesn't have to be set up that way. Okay. Within Kundalini, there is a, a very, very strong drive, urge, and compelling to initiate levels of love and kindness, uh, gentleness and consideration upon others fairness in how they're being treated and and uh, this is this is a truth and especially at the beginning stages as your stages uh, mature the levels of love will spread out to understand different different uh, stages of love for instance uh, when a parent corrects a child, uh, that would be a different stage of love than, than two people romancing each other, that type of thing. And these days, a lot of pain is being given. And yet at the same time, a lot of love is being demonstrated. Pain, injury, abuse, and love. And you're thinking, well, how the heck do you connect those types of forces? And you do connect them because nothing here on this world is happening accidentally to anyone. Okay, Everybody's made a choice one way or the other. If you're a, a woman and you're living with that abusive husband, alcoholically you know, abusive husband, well, you made a choice to be with that man. You made a choice. Now... I'm not saying that it's fair. Uh, most of the time, it's not going to be fair. You didn't think that you were marrying an abusive, alcoholic man when you were when you got married. You didn't think that that was happening. You know, he didn't let you know. Maybe he wasn't being as honest as he could have been. But regardless, uh, a choice was made. Children were also made. And so now there's a deepening of the lessons that you as a woman and a mother and an individual uh, have to learn. Uh, some of the lessons can be, well, how do I extricate myself from this and be self-sufficient so that I can raise my kids and I have uh, peace and, and happiness in my life? Um, this would be the ultimate goal in that type of a situation, except it's not, because karma gets to have its say. Karma gets to, 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 to determine how that individual is going to hold up against whatever levels of abuse that, that have been arranged for her to experience. And this is what people have to understand. Now, for those of you that are caught inside of that equation, uh, you, you need to continue to strive for self-sufficiency. If you're even hearing this, if you're even hearing this message, well, that is also part of the karma for you to learn a trade, for you to learn how to make money, for you to learn how to survive uh, in this world without having to be abused. Okay, so there's a lot of hurt going around, and, and it goes the same way, but 
to a lesser percentage of the population with women supporting men. And which absolutely, there is nothing wrong with that at all. You know, this whole idea of the 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 household being set up where the man goes out and makes all the money, the woman stays home, raises the kids, and, you know, spends that money and all these things. Uh, this is not as much of a reality today as it has been in the past. Uh, in the past, yes, that was the case. These days, you know, it, it is it is common for a man to stay home. Like, well, what if the man gets laid off and you've got a two-income household and the man gets laid off, the woman's still working, you know, she's not the you know going to quit her job so she can be stay at home, even though she wasn't. But you know what I'm saying. Sometimes the man, before he gets another job, will stay at home and help with the kids and prepare the food and the whole bit. These these stereotypical roles that that um, have been foisted upon us by our parents and grandparents and great grandparents no longer are are really uh, applicable in this day and age as we go forward into um, into our grace. Because grace recognizes the equality of masculine and feminine. Totally recognizes that. 50% Shakti, 50% Shiva, and there is no glass ceiling for either one of them. Okay, so you can kind of see how far we have to go here in the United States at this time, you know, 2019. So there, I've just dated the uh, the video. <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen, you know. Anyway, I want you to realize that the, that the troubles that you bear under right now uh, are, are developing fruits, the fruit of what you would like to have happen to you as opposed to what is happening to you the fruit of having to bear up under, you know, really tremendous amounts of pain and anger and irritation and abuse, uh, not only for yourself, but also for your children. I want you to learn how to ground. I want you to walk barefoot on bare soil, and I want you to make that connection with the earth. I want you to visualize a cord of energy going from the tip of your tailbone straight into the earth. Same thing with your feet, from the bottoms of your feet, the soles of your feet, straight into the earth. And I want you to give that resentment to the earth. Let it, let the earth compost it, so to say, as someone just mentioned on the on the group. Let the earth compost it, and you know, pull the energy, the pure energy of sacred femininity, which is the world, back up into your system to nourish you and to help you learn how to propel yourself forward, to take yourself out from under the, the difficulties of feeling that you can't make it in this world, you know, to get over those fears. The fears are not real. They are not real. And you can do it. You can go to the JC, you know, whatever you can do within the, you know, the strange uh, confines of that marriage. And sometimes you may just need to leave, my friends, my, my female friends, my women friends. You may just need to leave that man and trust your grace, trust the kundalini to give to you what you need what your kids need and and to trust that force because it will come through for you but it's hard to make that that uh, decision because you know that your kids need food every day you know they need to have clothing they you know they're going to school all of these things and that your husband is also a father and so you know, got to go through that whole legal maelstrom of of separation and divorce and he may not want to do that he may try to to beat you some more to beat you into submission and you need not let that occur you need not let you call that sheriff you call the police department you call whoever you can call that can put a stop to that don't be afraid if you're hearing this and you've paid your karma it's done it's finished time for you to move on and your trust in the kundalini your trust in the shakti the sacred feminine the sacred mother will push you forward out of that terrible terrible relationship 
that was necessary for a time, but is no longer necessary. This goes for both genders. Okay, if if if, if the man is living under similar situations, well, and I'm talking to you too. You don't need to live your life as a victim of another person. I want you to get rid of that victim mentality. Remember the grounding I just described to you, walking barefoot on the earth, and to really, really tighten that connection. Okay, This tightens your resolve, and this helps you follow the compellings of kundalini that are constantly coming to you. I know you're hearing this. And I know you're wondering, well, how do I put that into practice? Well, you just have to go out and do it. Do it. Go out to a park. Take the kids to a park. Go out to a park. Take your shoes off. Feel that connection. Now, if you're, if you're seeing this in the wintertime and there's ice over everything, well, you know, maybe find a warm spot. <laughs> if, if you can. I know, I know that, you know, places on, you know, places where there's a lot of ice in the winter, make it harder for you to ground that way. But you can still do the visualization from the tailbone into the earth. Okay. That's the first thing you need to do is to ground yourself so that your fear has an exit point in your body. It's not just being stored in your body. All right. Now let's see. I'd like to say hello to everybody who's walking, watching right now. Michael, I won't try to pronounce your last name. It sounds Polish. Good to see you. And Sasha. Hello, Sasha and Ben. Good to see you. Uh, Zelsko Buchev. Nice to see everybody here. David, nice to see you. Tommy, or who I like to call Tomei. <laughs> Felicia, good to see you, Felicia. Anyway, so... Ladies and gentlemen, really, really begin to take this to heart. You can trust your kundalini with your life and with the lives of your kids. You can do this. You know, it's doable. But you have to get over those fears of being by yourself. And that's okay, because with kids, you're never really by yourself, are you? I'm going to be doing a, a few videos today. So for those of you that are watching live right now, David, Felicia, and the other uh, people that I mentioned, uh, stay tuned. I'll be doing other videos. And thank you, everyone, for watching.